<laughs> well, well, well. Welcome in to Take This. We have a big, big, big college football show for you today. And honestly, I'm going to jump right into it. So I'm Brad. Griff is here with me. And over the weekend, Michigan State beat Michigan. And Jim Harbaugh has somehow lost his mind. So he went on the radio this week. And he's like, there's a lot out of, the, out of his control. A lot of lot of uh, 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 what's what's it called uh, uh, factors that that were out of our control like replay uh, that uh, blah 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 our players deserve better now Griff hear me out at the beginning of the year I told you this I don't know if Michigan is for real and I'm not saying that they're frauds but I don't I don't know if they're for real and do you know why Jim Harbaugh still hasn't beaten an AP Top 15 team on the road. That's something he hasn't done. And he has uh, not not proven himself. Um, he went on the road to beat Wisconsin, which is great, which is a big, big win because it's not something he's been able to do lately. And But I told you, I need a full season. Need a full season. Can't judge Harbaugh because he's done this before. Every year, I mean last year even, we were like, people on ESPN, this is the best team, the best team that Harbaugh has, has fielded. The best team, the media was like, oh, like I love this team. Same 2019, same in 2018. We're same thing. We heard the same thing in 2016. This is a great team that Michigan has right here. But every year, the best teams that Michigan faces always beat them. And it's always the most important games of the season, and it happens every year. Now, Griff, please, uh, what is, how do you feel about uh, about everything? It is, I know you have a huge rant well, planned, and I really, I need, see, I need you to hold it back, but God, I would be so livid. Um, yeah, I mean, livid doesn't really begin to describe it. I have been off the Harbaugh train really since, you know, whatever the first year they got blown out was, probably 2018, and then especially after 2019. Uh, I mean, it was it, it was pathetic. Um, I'm going to say that here is my bright side, and we'll talk about the playoff in a little bit. Michigan's season is not over, weirdly enough. An 11-1 and Michigan team, regardless of uh, Big Ten Championship, especially considering what we saw from the CFP rankings released yesterday, shows me that, yeah, the, the college football playoff committee thinks we're legit. And if we win the rest of our games, regardless of whether we go to the Big Ten championship, we probably get into the playoff. Now, so the season isn't over, but God damn it, does it feel like it is. Um, I mean, it just talking about it from a game perspective, I mean... You were up 16 points in the third quarter, and then you let Michigan State go on a 23-3 to scoring run against you. I don't want to hear about the Peyton Thorne fumble. I don't want to hear about the Jalen Reed catch uh, that was close to the dirt. I don't want to hear about uh, Kenneth Walker's potentially fumbled touchdown you know, touchdown, the first touchdown he scored where it looked like he might have dropped the ball before crossing the plane. I don't want to hear about it. That Peyton Thorne fumble was in the second quarter. You, If that was at the end of the game and you didn't get another play to do something, then I can see your argument because you didn't get to control anything else after that. It was in the second quarter because not only after that fumble did you get the ball back, you went down and scored a field goal before the half ended, and then you got the ball back in the beginning of the half. You had two picks early. You were up 16 points in the third quarter. You should have put away the game. And you're blaming the officials. You're bl like, And the quarterback roulette play, which I we had said, and numerous people throughout – the Michigan sports media, especially, you know, 97 won the ticket, Woodward Sports, and, you know, us, not that we're anywhere near that, but people were saying this quarterback roulette thing is going to get you killed. And look what happened. JJ, when he came in, he made that great throw uh, to Andrell Anthony, who, by the way, bright spot, right? That's probably one of the best things I can take out of that game. And also, Cade McNamara probably 
played the best game of his career. And when JJ came in, he made that great throw. But then late in the game, I mean, he makes two terrible. Uh, he almost fumbles the one ball, or he does fumble it, but he d- doesn't get recovered, luckily. And then he fumbles the handoff to Blake Corum, which, by the way, uh, the leader of men, Jim Harbaugh, blames the running back to protect McCarthy. And this whole thing with the quarterbacks all stems from the fact that he is scared of both of the quarterbacks' families. He is horrified of if he just tells J.J. you're not playing this year unless it's garbage time, that his family will make will be pissed and he'll transfer. But he's also afraid, he also probably knows J.J. wasn't ready, I mean, from what we saw. Like you said, he's got the arm talent, but he's still learning. He's, he's still not being safe with the ball. He's not p- performing at the level. He's got the untapped talent but it's not been fully cultivated yet and so like but the thing is Kate's got to be pissed because he played he played a damn near perfect game on Saturday a few overthrows aside he threw for a gazillion yards he didn't commit many errors I I mean I I feel like if you're his family and him you also got to be thinking coach I, I played a good game why am I getting punished so it shows the the utter lack of a bill. You know, he just couldn't make a decision and go with it. He tried to appease both sides, and I think the reality was he just needed to not play JJ at all this year. And if that means he walks, like it's a difficult situation, but it probably cost you that game. Okay, but at the same time, like if if JJ like, and I get that, right? Like like that that seems to be the reason why JJ is even playing to begin with. Um. The the weird part is because they don't want him to transfer. The weird they part to, to me though is so that if transfer. you're JJ McCarthy and like you are the best QB on the roster, right? Like like what are the what are the like the the quarterback with the best upside, right? Like like would you agree that JJ is the quarterback with the best upside on Michigan's depth chart? Best upside, but but Kate has the higher and, floor. But and but the, the 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 problem that I have with that though is that like. If if you're JJ, you know you're gonna get the start later. So why would you leave? And well, I know, and I know the, the transfer rules and, are different and, now, so and, players could just leave. And and not you will, and that's true. And not to say like that. You know, obviously, I'm not saying this is like Michigan is a premier program because they win all the time because they haven't. But I'm saying Michigan is a big name program. They are always going to be at the top of a conversation it's a destination because school. they're Michigan, regardless of how good they are. So like, again, like you said, if you're JJ, you know, and that that's what I think Harbaugh as a coach needs to tell him, Hey, Cade waited his turn in line and he's playing well enough to keep the starting job. You're a freshman. You have three more years after this. You're going to you're going to ride the bench this year. But then after well if the other issue is Kate isn't a senior, so it's like how long do you do it? But and, it's like and right. Well, we're going to ride we're going to ride the lightning with Cade and next year we'll see we'll reassess and you're probably going to start next year. You know, you tell him that. Yeah, and I mean and, and then guess what? If Cade still wins the QB battle in camp, if KB if if Cade McNamara as I think he's a senior next year, still wins the QB battle in camp, and J.J. doesn't start in his sophomore year, then maybe he wasn't as good as we thought, and him going to the transfer portal is not that big of a deal. Right. Now, that's the game itself. Uh, you got Tuck came, all right? Tuck was coming, Tuck came, uh, and he outcoached your ass, all right? But I think this is what gets me more. You blew the game, but hey, you know what? You play, despite the coaching errors and how poor the defense looked at times, you played well. I mean, the the when the running game didn't work, hey, your passing game actually showed up. A thing I was worried about. Your passing game showed up. You threw for a shit ton of yards. Even if you take the the Andrell Anthony touchdown away as like the one big play, you still threw for I think almost 300 400 yards. Um, you know, so you did show, hey, when your running game gets snubbed, you can rely on passing the ball. Granted, Michigan State's defense and their secondary specifically Nothing fantastic, but I uh, hey, when they when your passing game works, it works. No, and Cade didn't but do it's anything. What happened after the game? Cade did also did not do anything to admit hit like it, it admit 
JJ being in there. Like he didn't do Cade played so, great. Like he didn't play yeah. poorly. And at the end of the game, so he should not have been replaced. Uh, as far as the last drive, why JJ was in there? Apparently, he was in the tent, which, which I don't I know if can, isn't, is true or isn't true. It might not. Like I know Doug Karsh, who uh, is on ninety seven, won the ticket. Who is uh, is the sideline reporter for the radio broadcast for U of M? Um, has said he saw him go into the into the the tent. So I don't know. Uh, but regardless. If it, if it was because of an injury, then your hands were tied. If it's not, then that's obviously not great. But that, you know, the loss is the loss. I've It's driven me nuts all week, obviously, seeing – I've had to, like, mute a bunch of words on Twitter because I just can't stand it. <laughs> like, this was worse than getting blown out because we had the lead and we choked it. And just seeing Spartan fans rightfully brag, it, it, it hurts. And, like – and then for Harbaugh to come out this week and say there were things we couldn't control. Our guys deserve better because there were because the calls calls plural by the way. So he's not just talking about the Peyton Thorn fumble calls plural went against us. Michigan State when they went against Indiana and they won twenty to fifteen. That was the most worst officiated game I've ever seen against Michigan State. 17 penalties, I think 13 were accepted against Michigan State, three against Indiana. And guess what Michigan State did? They didn't make excuses. They won the fucking game. They made plays. So this game, real quick, Michigan State down 16 points. You know what they did? Made plays. Two big third down conversions. Made both of their two point conversions. They were fourth down conversions. They were or sorry, did I say down. third? I meant they, to say fourth Michigan down State did not have a third down conversion until the fourth quarter of this game. How the and fuck do you them. lose to a team that doesn't convert a single third down until the last 15 minutes of the game? How does that happen? Mm-hmm. What the fuck do you have to do wrong in order for and, you and- to choke that badly? How does that? So I don't for, understand the 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 pro, how that happens at all. So for Harbaugh to then come out and say we got snubbed by the refs, no, the game was officiated fairly well. Like from what? Sure, were there some holding calls missed? Yeah, but anyone who's played football or has watched football for any decent period of time knows holding is probably happens on every single plane football in every level NFL, NCAA. Call, uh, football or sorry high school football like it happens so like you're not gonna always be able to rely on that call and you know I, I, me Brad we'll talk about the fumble in a minute and like and that but all you had to do was make a play stop one of the, the two-point conversions stop them from just letting Kenneth Walker run all over you and being making you his bitch like Stop a one of the fourth down plays. And don't get me wrong, Michigan State made some great plays to do them, but you should have been right. I mean, think about they made those two fourth down conversions. You were going to go for it fourth and one, committed a false start, and then botched a punt, which your punter then had to run for the first down and came up short and gave them the ball with good field position. Like those are the the, the two or three plays every game that can determine the outcome. Those were the plays, and you didn't execute. And then for you to come out this week and say, oh, it's because of the referees, and we deserve better, because that's what you're taught at Michigan. You are special. You deserve the best. You deserve to just get to beat Michigan State. You don't have to earn it. And that's not to say those guys in the locker room don't play hard and don't put the work in. That's not what I'm saying. But the mentality of of Michigan is that you are better than everyone else no matter what you do and you don't have to prove it and it's that mentality that keeps getting you beat it's that mentality of calling everyone little brother guess what Michigan State does they turn that into fuel and they use it to burn your ass so I, I, I'm sick of it. Brad, I'm wearing a Lions sweatshirt right now. An 0-8 <laughs> Lions how, oh, sweatshirt because I'd rather rep this team who, while they might be dog shit, at least, hey, guess what? They try every week. I mean, imagine they if imagine aren't if Dan Campbell braggadocious dicks. Yeah, imagine if Dan not Campbell comes dicks, out here, and at least I know there's a bright future ahead with them. At least I hope with a rebuild, right? That's all you have is it can't get worse than this. 
But yeah, no. Imagine Dan Campbell acting coming, like uh, coming out and being does. like, like th- you know, our players deserve better or whatever. Like Dan Campbell has garbage at, for talent. Like he does not have NF an NFL team, and he comes out after a loss and he's like, "This one's on me." Like this, this is my fault. And I'm like, dude, you are trying to owns, build like, fire really with like, no firewood. Yeah. And so, I just don't, I don't, I don't get it. Michigan has a good team. If you're Jim Harbaugh, you you coach a better game. I don't know what to tell. I mean, Mel Tucker played to win. You don't make that two yep. point conversion. You don't make that those fourth down conversions if you're not trying to win. And Mel Tucker came in, and I mean, every time you looked at him, you looked at Tough Mel coming. Tucker on the sidelines, and he had a fucking job to do. You look at Jim Harbaugh, and he's got his like ass in his hand or whatever the hell he's doing with his like mouth agape i don't even know what the fuck that face is but i see it all the time and if that's who you are then maybe that's who you are and maybe you're not good enough to beat a team like michigan state or like ohio state maybe you're just not a good coach maybe that you just fucking suck at your job have you ever considered that maybe it's not replay it's you and I, I don't know what yeah. to, I do not know what to tell this man who's always got his mouth wide open. It makes no it, sense. It, it just, and it just doesn't it look good. How do you insane. not have a guy just, that's like, maybe you want to look good on TV? I don't get it. Well, I, I don't even care. Like, you can look like a fucking idiot. Like, Bill I, Belichick has looked like, <laughs> looks like insane on the sidelines. But guess what? You get results and no one gives a shit. But like, yeah, it just, he doesn't. I mean, after everything, and here's the thing. This isn't to say Michigan's even bad. They played great. They had a 16-point th- a lead, but they, they choked it. But, like, they're, st- and they're still number seven in the college football playoff ranking. Like, they are I mean, legit. they, they like, still have their whole season legit. in front of them. Like, they could still they turn do. this around. No, like I said, they could they, beat Ohio State. They control their own destiny to at least go to the college football playoff. If they win out, they go to the playoff. I think the fact that the committee put them at seven, and again, that's right after their first loss of the season, but I think it shows, like, I think it shows, one, Michigan State, like, they've, like, if there was ever such a thing as a valuable, valuable loss, Michigan has it. Right. I mean, I think yeah, exactly. Their loss they have a is reason. The, like, I know Michigan Alabama State, and, and I could Oregon foresee, and Ohio State are higher, but I could foresee Michigan, like, I think State, Michigan winning has the Big the Ten. Least harmful loss. Michigan State could win the Big Ten, and Michigan could still go to the playoff. And I know you don't like to hear that. You know, That'd be we'll, awesome. we'll, we would get into it later. But I don't think, like, I could see if Michigan beats Ohio State and Michigan State loses to Ohio State. By the way, there would be a three-way tie in the Big Ten, and I want to talk about that later. But if that happened, Michigan State would win the tiebreaker to go to the Big Ten title game. And I still think that Michigan has a more valuable win in Ohio State that would get them to the playoff. Like I really, really do. Like Michigan State, if Michigan State lost to Ohio State but still won the Big Ten, I mean, you, you at that point, they probably still go. I I don't think you can put both in, but I still think that Michigan had a best probably would would. have a better resume than Michigan State does. Yeah, well, and it's so yeah, it's and I I wanted to talk for a second. And here's the thing about Michigan, real quick, uh, specifically because they're good. Okay, and I and, and again, I was going to say they could beat Ohio State this year. They, like they, they could talent level. They have the talent. I I think, and 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 I think and I think that's the Defense difference too with true. Michigan State. When I mention that you don't make those fourth down plays, you don't make those those four uh, those two point conversions at the end of the game. You, I mean, they went for two. I mean, or, I'm sorry, they went on fourth down. They had a fourth and three, and they lobbed it up to uh what was it Jaden Reed at the at the pylon or whatever where he landed on the 3 yard line like they made that play when they were down by 16 points and that was the best throw of Peyton Thorne's career and you don't oh, make that well, play that unless you're winning the game and and, and for as, if you look at what Michigan did in the play calls they chose they I mean if if Michigan State settles for a field goal in any of those circumstances they don't win the game it, and, and Michi- what did Michigan do they settled for four field goals Michigan State didn't have a single field goal in this game Michigan kicked field goals they they settled for them even though they had they four, four field goals way more scores they outplayed Michigan in almost every facet of the game and 
and I don't know, like you don't kick field goals and expect to win a game. No, no team will kick four field goals in a game and win the game. You can't expect that. You just can't expect to win when you're always kicking field goals. And I think, and I think this is the thing too. And I'm not gonna say that Michigan's a fraud or whatever. I think that they're exactly who like we thought they were. They're a good team who, and and also like, um, they just they just haven't made the long-term commitment to a the passing game i think that they could have been way more impressive in the earlier days of uh of uh, earlier weeks or whatever right like like michigan state has been passing and running the ball and playing their plays in the just uh, just just in general of the of the context of the game right whereas michigan once they get down to the red zone it's like run 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 that doesn't prepare you for playing against teams that are going to be better than stopping the run in the red zone and another reason why michigan has had so much issue in the red zone is because they haven't been able to throw it there and i think that when when you look at michigan state's plays that they made and the reason that i say that Mel Tucker is out coached Jim Harbaugh. It's because Michigan State has a couple of plays in their back pocket that they could just go to. Can you say that Michigan has those? And I think that that's exactly the distinction that you saw. You saw Michigan wasn't able to to make good plays or be able to like it didn't seem like they were really confident when it got down to the when the water level rose. Like we've talked about before, what happens when that happens and you got to pass the ball. And I mean Cade McNamara threw a great game. But at the same time, when it comes down to those clutch performances and and moments when you got like a third down conversion and you're on Michigan State's side of the field, like you got to make that play. You got to do it. And I mean, again, Michigan State hadn't converted a third down until the last quarter. So like, yeah, they're not. It's it's not great. But like when the time came, like Peyton Thorne threw a dime to Jaden Reed. That was a play that was, again, in Michigan's back pocket or like that fourth down conversion where he just lobbed it up to uh I, I god I can't remember the one receiver but he just lobbed it up to him yeah it was it was Jalen Naylor he and that's the thing like when you have plays like that being made like you're winning the game like those are those are big time plays Michigan doesn't really have that sort of side to them and I think that when you're just hanging on for dear life in every game as Michigan has been um, I, I just really think that it's going to catch up to you and I'm not again we I, Michigan has insane talent but I think it really just comes down to the coaching at this point, right? Like it just comes down to the coaching. No, I, and because yeah, Michigan's think a talented I, team, they have a talented team. There's so no is, reason they're number the seven. So is Michigan State. Right. Michigan State and Michigan, we uh, we had talked about last week. They were the, they're the same team. They're two sides of the same coin, and it was going to be who outcoached the other. And I thought. When they went up thirty to fourteen, I thought this that could be ball game for Michigan because oh, I thought that the game was over in the third quarter, midway through the third yeah, quarter. I, I was I, a lot of people, and I, I saw on Twitter like Spartans, like especially Spartans, because when you're down sixteen, you feel no, hopeless. Yeah. Like, this game's over, <laughs> fuck, we're done. And I was like, oh wow, okay, hey, we might we might do this. I went. I was going to a friend's. It was you know that was Saturday. I, saw, the 30th. I was going to a friend's like, house for fuck Halloween. Just happened. I literally drove from my place in Novi to Troy, Michigan, which is about a 40-minute drive. We stopped for some stuff from the gas station, so it was probably about a 45, 50-minute. From the time I left, it, it went from 30 to 16 to 37, 33, and, and we lost. I mean, also, I, I, I just want to say the point. field goals, the field goals, um, I sh- we got to convert in the red zone. That's our, our cryptic, our, our uh, kryptonite. Like, what we and kick, I, and I said that, like, the Michigan's red Off. zone offense is the thing that concerns me terrible. the most about when uh, yeah, coming it was, the game. It was... So, Brad, I do want to, I guess we'll quickly talk about the fumble, because this is like, this is not something I think caused the game to no. be... I don't think it really affected the outcome, obviously, because... The, so the fumble, the the Peyton Thorn fumble. I think it was uh, oh, was it? No, Hutchinson. I think recovered it. Yeah, it Hutchinson. Was, I forget recovered who actually. I, I can't remember either. But I always forget how to say his last name. It starts with an O. Oh, um, oh, something, something. I know who you're talking about. Ojaba, yeah, Oka- Oja, Oka- Oja, Oka- Oka- 
whatever. It's some sort of consonant. Yeah, like that. David Oja- Ojabo. That's what it is. O J A B O. I'm probably saying it wrong. I apologize mm-hmm. to the young man, but he what it looked like strip sacked Peyton Thorne, and it looked like Aiden and. If it was indeed a fumble, clearly Michigan recovered in the Spartans end zone for a touchdown. And upon replay review, um, they determined that he was down before the ball came out and turned it back over. And it was close. Like, I think no matter what side of it you're on, it was definitely like, like frames difference, right? Between a fumble and not especially because the camera angle didn't let us get a good visual of where his knee slash shin was versus the ball. You kind of had to time it up, which is makes it even more difficult to tell. I personally, and and I personally think there wasn't enough. Uh, like I'm fine with like certain reofficiating. Like if you want to string together two different replay angles to help determine was a knee down before a ball was here or whatever, that's fine. I just don't think we had a, a good enough view either way to tell, and I don't think there was enough uh, enough infor- you know rules as written is if it's not inconclusive you can't overturn it. And the my logic with this is if you go back to the Kenneth Walker touchdown, literally I think two drives before that, yeah. his first touchdown, right? Yeah, where it looks like he drops the ball. Yeah, but it's very close. I think, oh, and my thing is you couldn't tell. Which by the way, and again I'm not. This isn't. Like, I'm not mad because even if you had this angle, I still think it doesn't get overturned because I do think he was probably across. But why the hell wasn't there like a goal line view? They were, it's like, it's not like this was a long run. The Michigan State was on like the 24 yard line. Why did they not have a goal line, like a pylon cam or something? That that part was really strange to me. Fox didn't have that camera. The weird part to me about that is, is, is like, I feel like. And, and I don't know, is this part of replay where you were like, cause the weird part about the Kenneth Walker run was that like, it was just like, which an oopsie, by the way, because you know? of how he fumbled and then he fumbled out of the back of the end yeah. zone, it would have been Michigan ball at the 20 yeah. and Michigan state doesn't score anything. No. So like that is a play where if it's overturned, yeah. it, that's it's, a big implication a big, yeah. in, the, in the game, the, 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 especially because that point Michigan state was down 14, nothing. And then we have given the ball up. In the unless it's zone. very obvious that he dropped the ball before the end zone. Like I think even if he's like, you know, within a half yard of the end zone and you can't really tell because of the way he was carrying the ball, like he scores, like obviously he scores like it. Yeah. And, but and, it's one of those things. If you make a boneheaded like, play, I, mean, I like give you the, we've I, seen it happen I don't know. A I give you the benefit of the doubt, still does. right? Like I give you the benefit of the doubt because that's a dumb play. Like that's stupid. Yeah, unless it's clear. Like unless it's clear, I, I agree. I mean, it's the same thing and, with and when think, Calvin Johnson dropped it's like, the ball. It, it wasn't. Yeah, oh, you know what I mean. Like you didn't complete the process. <laughs> like I think if you're the refs, you give him the benefit of the doubt on that one because he obviously had yeah. the ball. Like common sense should play a role, shouldn't it? Yeah. No. And I and I agree. And like. The and I think that's a where bit, it's a, it's a little bit harder to tell th- there's, there's gray area. And like, that's why I think like Kenneth Walker should have stayed a touchdown simply for the fact of, um, you know, you, you can't tell it's too close. Go with the call in the field. And I think, and I think it was di- like the Kenneth Walker one. I think it was way closer on the Peyton Thorne fumble. I've kind of come around on it. I was really like, that shouldn't have been called. And again, I, even the day they lost, I did not blame that play because even still, yeah, I mean it's still irrelevant you, because you're you blew what, a you're sixteen tied. point lead. If you had four more points, it's tied. Yeah, like it, it wouldn't have changed my opinion because no. I, I it does. I don't think it really changes the outcome of the game that much. Not at all. I I think like, and, but and, I do. It's more so like a it's a principle thing. Yeah, and I like I said, I just don't. Well, like, I mean, it's but, in the rule book. Like, I think that that's that's like every right to be to be upset about the call. Like, I'm not disagreeing with anyone on that. Um, I think that yeah. like you have a right to be upset, and that that sucks, right? And again, if it's on the last play, that's you're totally fair to bitch about it. Like, I would honestly, give yeah. You, then then you could like you played hard the whole right. game back and forth, and then minimal you lose mistake. On a lost it's play. just been like a good game. Like when Cleveland game. lost against Kansas City in the playoffs last year, like that was a dumb play um, that they shouldn't yeah. have lost on, and and that should have been a bad a bad hit, unnecessary roughness at the end. But like with the Peyton Ford, well, that double, was at the end of a half. Well, that's that's I, that, I guess that's fair, but um, but I mean, however, that was that was also a big deal. Because that, like, 
the the difference between what happened with Peyton Thorne is like Michigan still got the ball back. Right. They got it. It was it was fourth down. I think either way, or right. if it wasn't, yeah, I think it was fourth down after that. So yeah. they just punted. So whereas in that game, it was the difference between first and goal at the one, and then giving Kansas City the ball back right. at the twenty. And especially because it also had a basically a targeting hit, as far as I'm concerned. By the way, that was a former Wolverine. I think it was Peoples Jones who got hit in the <sighs> game. It was. Uh, I was really mad, not because he was a Wolverine. I just was rooting for the Browns. But, right. So I mean, so um, was I. I was. I, I didn't like the Chiefs in that game, but um, I, I want to say too, though. Like, I mean, if you're gonna bitch about replay, like you got to talk about both sides. I mean, you know, and and, and the the one where where Jaden Reed had caught that pass was that Reed that caught the one that 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 was on the ground. Yeah, that or was something Reed. like that. The one that was so, like it was a it was. Barely here off the my, ground, which, by the way, I always time. wonder. Go on. I was just say I always wonder, like, if you have tufts of grass that stick up from the field that have, are sticking up because of, like, someone, you know, running through, it's, like, basically it was caused because of someone running and their cleats tore it up. Right. Does that count? Is that an extension of the turf now in terms of, like, oh. the ball hitting the ground? Or does it have to, like – hit like the it's 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 a weird gray area right. but well, anyway and like go ahead. the 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 catch was the weird one that that i don't understand why people are complaining about it because i mean as a as a person who was you know egging for michigan state right like i i watched that play and i was like that's an underthrown pass like obviously you know he didn't catch the ball like i thought that that hit the ground like as i watched that with my eyes and then they go back to replay and yeah. i'm like why are they showing this replay like that was my first thought because i was like why are they showing this like that obviously wasn't a catch like that wasn't even close to being a catch and then they showed it and i was like holy shit he caught that like it felt as though they went back and they edited the replay and did some like fucking like <laughs> video modification well, that, that's just how good he is or but like it was so crazy to me that they actually went and caught the ball so like i don't know i don't know how you look back on the play because now you can go back with technology you can go back and view it like you can go back do whatever the hell you want with it and i don't know how you view it right now and say that that wasn't a catch he obviously had the ball the ball didn't even touch the ground where are you where are you talking about and i mean you want to talk about excuses though i mean michigan state started off with two turnovers in the game they didn't they didn't whine and cry about it they didn't like you know sit down and 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 feel sorry for themselves or whatever they started making plays what about when uh, number Which, 90 on Michigan starts choking Kenneth Walker right in front of the yeah, official was, blown call there. That was dirty. Um, that was awful. And that, that was awful. And I mean, that's again, you talk about the culture with Michigan. Like they see some dude running up the score. They go try to kill him. And, and again, like that was right in front of the official. They didn't call it. Um, you want to talk about holding on Michigan state, Mich whatever, like it's football shit happens. I mean, yeah, holding what's, calls what's are blown all the on, time. Uh, was it Hall Halliday? Um, the linebacker on state. I mean, he must have gotten yeah uh, I all the time. I don't know how many, how many uh, not holding. Well, I guess I don't know if it was defensive holding or. Uh, I mean, you or, could, yeah, he must have gotten held a gazillion times. Like it was insane. And, and, but and the stuff I about the pass interference kind of, too, real quick. And this is the last point I want to make. The stuff about the pass interference does not make sense to me because if you've watched any Big Ten game this year, they have done a hell of a job cleaning up the pass interference penalties. I wanna, I really, and you gotta give credit where it's due because I have been so critical about Big Ten refs or just just refs in the in college football in general. Yeah. Screw messing up the game because at at this point it was almost at the point where I would watch a scoring play every time without fail, and I'd be waiting for a flag every time. And I, this year, they've really, like, really, cl like, called the, 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 the obvious pass interference calls but they've really let them battle for it almost as if as if the what the rule was intended and designed to do whereas like both both uh defend the defender and the receiver have an equal opportunity to the ball right and they've they've almost kind of gotten away from that but I really like that they've kind of let them like battle it out until it really gets like, unless someone's obviously tripped or obviously there's tugging and pulling, like they've really let them battle for it. And I really, uh, I honestly commend that. And I really just gotta, again, like you can't really get mad at the pass interference calls because they've been almost perfect. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Have you noticed that? I like, think you this game really comes games? down to, and, and this is where this, you know, we talked about Harbaugh and Michigan a lot. 
But we, I think the thing that needs to not be lost here is Mel Tucker is legit. <laughs> like he's, he's the dude. Um, he played, he did had a, he coached a fantastic game and what he's been able to do in, you know, technically it's been two years, but really it's been a year and a half, right? Um, with, you know, the COVID year and his, he didn't even know his players you know, on day one when he came in here a year and a half ago. No, yeah, he didn't like even he didn't, know the guys. Not only did nothing, not only did he not like that first year, he didn't get a lot of any of the off season practicing. He, the games he played in, he played what six games or so, or yeah, eight games. Like, like yeah. it, it was barely a season. So this is bonus. really like his year one, you know? Yeah. And the fact that he's doing this and he's ranked three in the college football playoff. And granted, you know, there's still six games to go, but I mean, it's impressive. Or six weeks to go. Um, it's impressive. And you got and a Heisman candidate. That I, you got to give out of the transfer poll. Like Ka- Kenneth Walker. Yeah, you know, he he used it very well. He, Kenneth very Walker well. was a two star recruit. You know that two star, two stars. And he's a Heisman candidate. That's why. That's why. Whenever Michigan's like, we got these many four and five star recruits. I don't really. And yeah, and worry I mean, about your it. five star recruits don't look like Ohio State's five star recruits. So I don't even know what they're trying to do. Um, one well, thing. Well, it's all about development. It's about what <laughs> five star is po- the potential. Yeah, right. What they do with it mm. is different. Like Shea Patterson so. probably ruined. Um, so one thing oh, I wanted shit. to mention real quick. Uh, with um, Michigan State and Mel Tucker, and it's it's great, by the way. Like I am ecstatic, like absolutely insane. Yeah, I can't no, believe guys, Michigan State was dog. projected to be a fringe bowl team, and now they're eight zero, leading the, the Big Ten. The expectation this year was just go six and six. Six and, and six? And they, Are you kidding me? Oh my god, it was crazy. And that's coming from like not only did like like the bit like Mike Valeni, who is like, you know, we've referenced him a lot on here. Probably but he has that. been a guy who, like, he's very critical of his own school. Yeah. And he said at the beginning of the year, listen, I get what this year is. Go 6-6 six and six and make a bowl. That was his bare minimum expectation, right. granted. But that's how – that was what he thought the <laughs> the lowest they could – I mean, at this point, if they, they, go less, if they went less than 9-3, and three, I'd be pissed at this point, you know? like, And that's no, how you much the expectations have changed. they got to win two of the next three. Right. Um, one thing I wanted nope. to mention: beat Purdue, beat beat a uh, 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 Purdue, a scrappy Purdue team. Have you seen their drum? <laughs> <laughs> so one thing I wanted to mention real quick about Mel Tucker, and I don't know if you noticed this while you were watching the game, but look look at this. So remember when Andre Anthony, whatever the hell his name is, uh, the dude that came out of yep, nowhere uh, from Michigan, um, from East Lansing, dude. By the way. Yeah, right. Dude puts up sick numbers all like all of, out of nowhere, basically. Like he really yep. helped Cade solidify like that like passing game, right? Um, so here's here's the deal, and I noticed. By this. the way, where the hell has he been this whole time? <laughs> I know. I, I mean, really, why was he not utilized like, sooner? So, so one thing that was interesting to me was that Chester Kimbrough got. I, I think that's his name. I think that's who it was. Uh, he got kept getting beat. Um, by Andre Anthony, so Mel Tucker switched the matchup. What he did is he benched the guy for a lot of the play. I can't remember what happened, but that's why. But that's one of the things that I thought was like an ins- like a really big coaching move. Like he's like, dude, this guy's beating you every time. So we just put some other. Yeah. He put the backup in, and the and they kind of slowed down the coverage on him, which I thought was like a really ballsy move because you know coaches kind of always stick to their guys that they've you know have gotten them this far, whatever. But he was just like. Fuck it. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, it was wild. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I mean, and the fact that Mel Tucker goes on in a Monday presser this uh, this week and, you know, after the two days after the Michigan win and he starts saying, like, got no tolerance. And this is one thing that I wanted to bring up about Michigan, too. If, if Jim Harbaugh was like this, God, that would be amazing. But um, – but uh, Mel Tucker goes into into the meeting against Purdue, and Purdue's again. They 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 were ranked top twenty five for the first time since since twenty oh seven. They beat Iowa right uh, earlier this yeah. year. Um, so uh, he goes into the meeting and he's like, uh, "I got no tolerance. This is great. No tolerance for uh, for entitlement." That's some, that's what he said. He got he has no t- tolerance for entitlement, and he started he started explaining all of the times that that Purdue has beaten a top uh, a top ten opponent in FBS history, and it's the most in FBS. Okay, 
um they have the they also have they have, I think it's like 16 uh wins as an unranked opponent against uh top 10 teams. And then they also have nine. Nine of those are against top two teams. One of them to Iowa this year. And then he goes and lists them off. He lists every mm-hmm. single time that Mich- I mean that Purdue has beaten a has, top two has opponent. Beat, has basically played spoiler. And and well, and that's the thing. Like he goes into this and he's saying, like, he's he's not playing into this trap game narrative. Like, this is a serious game for Michigan State, a game that nobody's entitled to win. And that is what you want out of your coach. You want a guy who's not going to say, we deserve to win this game. We have to earn winning this game. And that is exactly the type of guy that Mel Tucker is. I don't anticipate that they will take this game lightly. And if they did, I'd be very disappointed. But I don't know. I mean, I Michigan State's trajectory of the program, they went into this Michigan game with nothing to lose. Jim Har, and again, like if Michigan State lost, I wouldn't even be mad. Because the trajectory of the program, program is still there and i mean again they're eight no they got uh they got purdue left on saturday uh that's a road game then they got maryland at home they go to columbus to play ohio state and that's probably an l but i mean who knows at this point and then they got penn state at home to end the season and i don't know like like if they if they won three out of the four and if here's the thing like if they beat osu like they went undefeated can you fucking imagine what that would be like They'd be ranked. They'd have to be ranked second. I mean, they have to be. I, you can't put. You can't put Michigan State when. Uh, I mean, you know, like even if Alabama beats, like honestly, if Alabama beats Georgia, could Michigan State be ranked number one? I know we're playing a little too. We're like <laughs> no, I, putting the cart a little bit before the horse. That's, but like, I mean, that's um, hard. Wait, no, Brad. Imagine this. No, hear hear me out. Hear me out. Georgia goes and goes undefeated. Bama loses. Let's say they don't get in. You have Michigan State at number two. Yeah. Going undefeated. Michigan wins out as well. Oh, my God. And they are ranked at number. Can uh, you believe if Michigan and Michigan State beat Ohio State? That would be insane. That, the world it would, would fall. Be, uh, I think that Ohio State's yeah, it, it would. sky would just crack. It'd be like Chicken Little. Like nothing. I love it though. Like yeah, I'll root. I'll be rooting for Emmett. Like as mad as I am that we lost to you guys, I'll be rooting for you again to beat Ohio State because I would love. I like. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't. I, I never hate you guys during the rivalry. Game, can man. I really lean into it then? Right. But after the rivalry rivalry week, I'm matter. just like, they're. I mean, they're the others. Like, no. And I, I if root anyone Michigan else to is going to win, State. I want it to be you guys. Right. Right. Exactly. Like that's kind of how I view it. I mean, I'm I don't want way. Ohio State to win anything. No. And it's not because I don't respect you or don't view you as a rival. I absolutely do. It's just like, I don't know. It's You're from the state. I have a lot of friends and family that are affiliated with the school, so I think that also has something to do with it. Right. So, um, but yeah, could you imagine like, Mich- so Georgia won, Michigan State at number two, and then like, I don't know, Oklahoma or Bama or someone at three, and then Michigan at four. Michigan does the unthinkable, beats Georgia, <laughs> Michigan versus Michigan State in the college football playoff finals. <laughs> I don't know. Oh the my rematch. God. Dude, we got it. Like, if storylines could write themselves, dude, oh, I'd love it. I would love it. We, we but there's a lot of work. We will to, get into that, that in just a moment, Griff. Are you ready to discuss the college football playoff when we get back? I'm right. Oh my God. We got a great <laughs> show. We have the college football playoff coming up. We have to talk about it. Got to get that in there. And then we have our who you got segment. We got uh, big picks today and to get into the NFL a little bit and end with our fantasy picks. Do we have to do fantasy recap? We have, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> some days uh, it doesn't. Oh no, we'll talk about it. I need to bitch uh, about it. All right. All right. I'll, uh, we'll see you guys after the break. All right, Griff. Let's get into the college football playoff. Um, All right, you want to just get you want to get the two. I would say the two. So we know um, Georgia's number one. Two, let's get the two unproblematic ones out of the way. So, Georgia number one, MSU in the top four. Right. I don't like if you put them at two, three, four because <sighs> of whatever. It's, fine, they're undefeated and they beat a top ten team. Top four, three is a fine spot. Okay, those are the two easy ones right. out of the way. So. So obviously, right, so Georgia's number one, Alabama number two, 
Michigan State number three, uh, Oregon number yep. four, Ohio State number five, and Cincinnati, despite being AP number two, is ranked number six. Um, yeah. Griff, who do you think right now? And I want to I want to ask you two questions, and I'm going to answer the same two questions. Um, who do you think was was the, the got the biggest snub? from the rankings right now and i want to go back into the t- i'm going to dig back into the top 10 so you got michigan number seven oklahoma number eight wake forest number nine and notre dame number 10 so like if i'm being honest well so i mean the, you easy, got the biggest snub. biggest biggest snub i probably oh. would say like there's not a lot but it, it would probably be um cincinnati uh Either them or Oklahoma, but I here's the thing. So Oklahoma, I understand why at the very least they're not in the top four, right? Because their wins have been against not great teams, and they've been some shaky close wins at that. Mm-hmm. But Oklahoma can 100% get in if they beat Baylor and they beat o- uh, Okie State. Like okay. that's all you got to do. Okay. And and if they do that, they're probably in, especially because we know, like we know either Ohio State or Michigan State has to lose at least one more time. Like one of those teams has to lose. Um, You know, Oregon can get beat. Bama very well could be, have two losses. Mm -hmm. So like Oklahoma can control their own destiny here. Yeah. So I'm not really viewing them as a snub because again, I just think it's because of where they're, we're at in the schedule. They still have their, their prove it games ahead of them, but from what they've shown so far, it just hasn't been great. So, and then uh, wake forest is, (laughs) I don't know how like I get it, you're undefeated, but like it's they haven't played anyone. It's very clear the college football playoff is it, the committee is basing their selection off two major f- things, and I think that is quality of wins and how good they think you if are. They, they will play one ranked team if North Carolina State remains ranked. Now I'm gonna I'm again they played. That's Wake Forest. Here's who they play. This is Wake Forest schedule. They played Old Dominion. Okay, Old Dominion is an FCS school. Yeah. They played Norfolk State, who is also an FCS school. <laughs> uh, they played Florida State. Yep. For, they play, how do you play? You can't play two FCS schools in a season and expect to get respect. Um, yeah. They so played like, Florida Wake Forest, State, I think, Virginia. is the easiest. They played Louisville. They played Syracuse. They played Army. They played Duke. They played North Carolina this week. And then next week they play uh, North Carolina State, who's number 19. Um, North Carolina State, though, uh, has, um, like, I don't know. I mean, the only game they lost, I guess they lost to Mississippi State and uh, Miami. I don't know if they deserve to be ranked either. But, um, but, but, but that's the thing. Like, Wake Forest hasn't played anyone, and they don't play anyone. So, I, I, you know, they kind of already not, like, they could win every game, and it wouldn't matter. At this point, it just wouldn't matter. They would. I, I'd top out. Their their ceiling is number seven, straight yeah. up. And here's the thing. I think, based on what we've seen here, the 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 committee is saying, you're not getting in, Cincy. No. And whether that's right or wrong, I mean, I here like, you want would I like basically if you're telling me, hey, would you rather see Oregon? Or Cincy versus yeah. Georgia. I'm gonna say Oregon. So he, and the same thing goes for Ohio you State. You know over a Cincy. secret? I'm gonna say here's here's my hot take. Cincinnati's too high. That's my hot take. Cincinnati's way too high. Like I'm sorry, they shouldn't be six. Like and and, and a lot of people Is are gonna Cincinnati put me, should Michigan be Michigan above Cincinnati? should be six. And and well should actually Oklahoma no 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 no, no be no. above Cincinnati. No, I'm sorry. Hang on, hang on. I'm sorry. I misspoke. You know who should be – Oklahoma should be six and Cincy should be mm-hmm. eight. I can't I, – I don't know. And, and again, I think Michigan's fine. Like, I really do. I think Michigan's placement's fine. I think seven's fine. a good number. I think I seven's think fine. fine for them. You, I think that it, Cincinnati's That number t- is, 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 l- tells me everything. And Yeah, you lost to Michigan State, but it was like a good loss because right. the team is good. They're undefeated. Right. And they're in the top three, so clearly they value – that they valued that game. Right. They valued both sides of it. Like they valued the fact that Michigan State beat Michigan because Michigan looked good. They valued that Michigan barely lost. You know, you know, it's a four point loss, right? That I would consider that a close loss, right? Right. You were within. They had a chance to go down and score at the end of the game, and they threw a pick. Right. It's like they were in it till the end, and so the, clearly they valued both of that. And I think that seven shows that like 
hey, you go 11-1 and one and beat Ohio State. Because here's the thing. They jump Cincinnati if they beat Ohio State. So, boom. And they – so at the very end, by beating Ohio State, they would jump them. So by that alone, they're up to five. Right. Like, and I think Michigan and Michigan State beat Penn State fairly easily because I think James Franklin uh, has given up. So it's like you know, and I think if it comes down to like Oregon, Oregon, or uh, Michigan, I think they pick Michigan. Even I think purely because of beating Ohio State, although Oregon also has that win. So it that's like the hard part is although. Here's here's what I think could happen, like right, like if Michigan beats Ohio State, and let's say MSU gets in for whatever reason, yeah, like and I think Georgia's going to beat Bama in the SEC title game. It could totally be Georgia, Michigan State, Oregon, and Michigan. Which, what a fucking weird playoff! I that think is. that <laughs> if I think that I think that a two loss Alabama team could get in, and I don't I don't think that you would like that at all. But I. I think, I think they like, could. Yeah, it would, I don't they doubt would have it. To I just rely hate it. a lot on other teams. Like I think that if you see, I think like, like that a, would be Oklahoma, Oklahoma lost can't go game. undefeated for Alabama to get in with two losses. Like that just can't happen. Um, Same thing with like Michigan. Like and, there will right. be one Big Ten school. It's either going to be Ohio State or Michigan could be two State. If there's a three way tie, um, but yeah, eleven and one Michigan, and then a big whoever the Big Ten champ is, and, like, and Ohio State would have like they'd be ten and two. Um, so, so the, yeah, they wouldn't. Go. So who do you think is too high? Oregon probably. Um, like you, I get you don't, Oregon you don't has think, to, you're not like everyone else. And you I say think Alabama. Ohio, so I've kind of reversed course and I know we had talked about it earlier where I said, Hey, they lost. And Why I tried so convincing high? you. Like, I don't think that, you know, and I just thought, Hey, a loss means should mean something, yeah. but like one, Clearly, the committee is showing they don't mind that as much, and they, I think they view the fact that like Alabama has ranked wins, which I think they value, and I think they're they're viewing it in the metric of, and you and you made this point earlier, and I I'll be honest, I was stubborn, but right. I think you were right. Um, if, if Alabama and Michigan State went against each other, Alabama they absolutely win, I think we'd, wins. We both no, say Bama. Yeah, and I mean it's about getting so, the best teams in the playoff, and I think if that's the goal, then Alabama's at a one-loss Alabama there, team is absolutely number two. I, I agree with you. Um, I don't think that it's. I think that it's different loss. conceptually from the the AP rankings in that con- to- context because we've been used we've been used to yeah. the AP rankings for so long, and that's what they have done. They valued wins and losses like almost equally, whereas like the the um. The uh, like college football playoff rankings like value wins a little bit more. Like I think that that's more yeah. important. And head to head is a very it's big... not just how many wins, it's quality. And that's wins. the thing. Like, that's what they meant. And which I'm fine with. Yeah. Like I think like my thing is like, man, Bama being a two loss team and getting in, it, it it really depends on the other teams and where they're at. Like I think if you have, let's say you know an eight of uh, an undefeated Oklahoma and then you have your big 10 champion and let's say Oregon doesn't lose another game. Like, I think you like whether it's Ohio state or, or Michigan state for like the big 10, like, so you have the, you have Ohio state or Michigan state. That's one slot. You obviously have Georgia. If they beat Alabama, like that's a no doubter. And then it's like, you know, Oklahoma, if, if they go undefeated and if Oregon wins out, you have to put those teams in. I think out. Al- I think at that point, just Alabama doesn't have a spot. But I think if any of those teams falter, I think Bama will get uh, the slot in there, which is totally possible. So um, I want to. W- I just can't see like like a conference champion not getting in a one loss conference champion not getting in be- over a two loss Bama yeah. team, even if it's a close game. It's like. <sighs> I don't know. It's and it's tough, and we're going to have to see how it plays out. I, it's a lot of conjecture at I this want point, to, I but want, I'm fine with this list the way it is. I want to point right. this out real quick too, and that the the list is done every week. Like, and I and and I don't even mean that it, that it's revoted on. Like, I mean that they go back to the drawing board and do the same exact process every week. So, like, this yep. is going to change. Like a 15, I think, I think Oklahoma one year that they made the college football playoff was like they were ranked 15th at the beginning of the rec- at the, the beginning of the thing. Michigan State was like 13 or something in the first poll. So it's like it, again, it's very fluid. 
Um, and, and I want to point out this article real quick that I highly recommend everyone read in The Athletic that came out on Monday um, where they talked about, and I'm not going to read this, the whole thing, uh, specifically because it's behind a paywall and to out of respect, I'm obviously not going to, um, you know, I think it's valuable journalism. I'm not going to, uh, you know, just spit it out and wait and, you know, ruin that for uh, them. But I want to point out two highlights uh, in this article real quick. And, and I think that it, it to, for me, it helps. I feel like reading this article was important because it helps understand the context of the polls and and the uh the article's titled you know inside the room where college football playoff teams are chosen and it's 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 titled 13 things that they don't tell you about the the committee okay um now it, it, the second one that they go through is that the process is obviously different from the coaches and the media polls um because in both those polls uh, like 60 or 70 or so a, a, a bunch of them a uh, bunch of sports writers or whoever the hell does it, coaches, whatever. Um, they all vote on the, their top 25 teams, and every team, you know, team one is – number one is given 25 points. Um, 24 uh, – I mean, uh, team two is given 24 points and, and all the way down to uh, – so to get one point, you got to be ranked 25th, right? Um, so and so on. Um, so the, the committee isn't 13 people doing this, right? So instead, the committee members go into the room – they have their top 30 or so teams, right? And they, they, uh, um, everyone votes on a, a varying amount of teams. Uh, and the ones with the most votes are placed into a pool of like six or eight uh, teams. And then committee members rank them against each other. And then after that, any leftover teams are kept in the pool and they rank though like a group of six or eight more. And then they, they just keep repeating the process until they get to 25. Um, and, it, and, and I think that an important critical part of this is that it t uh, members can have an issue with a team and, and their placement and they bring it up. And if, if four people agree with them, they can be placed into like a one on one comparison. And I think that's what you're seeing with some of these polls. Like if you go down down the list real quick and you go to say like 20. OK, so Minnesota's number 20. Do I think that Minnesota's number 20? Uh, maybe they're too high. OK, um, but but they've earned some respect. I think what happened in the meeting room specifically, and, and they talked about this on ESPN, is that Iowa was ranked like Iowa has a good team to be ranked. But Wisconsin beat Iowa. So Wisconsin is ahead of Iowa. But M Minnesota is in first place in the Big Ten West. You can't have a team with a better record and being first place in the Big Ten West with less conference losses, like you can't have that team be behind Wisconsin mm -hmm. or Iowa, so they had to put them above them. And so I think that that specific as aspect of it, where teams are being ranked, not just just in the context of like the spectrum of the FBS, but in the spectrum of just against each other. I think that that's a very important thing. That's why you're seeing teams like Oregon above Ohio State. That's why you're seeing teams like um, like Oklahoma, who almost lost to Kansas, be so far down. Or, um, you know, teams like BYU, who have a win against teams below them, and, and, and Baylor, who have, te you know, like if you have a win against a team, it's probably the team below you. And I just think that that's where you're seeing that. And I think that Alabama was given the benefit of the doubt because they are the second best team in the country. I don't think that that is going to be uh, disputed. So, and again, like, I think that this, this article really helps people gain some sort of perspective on what is going on inside the room. Um, yeah. One more thing that I wanted to point out real quick is, again, that what wins are more important than losses, uh, specifically. And lo losses matter. Um, like they, they specifically mentioned a time in 2014 when a six to six loss to us. Um, I'm sorry, a week two loss to Virginia tech, who was six and six almost kept Ohio state out of the field. And then Oklahoma lost to Texas in October, um, that almost pushed them out of the field as well in 2015. And so like, I think that it's, it's specifically mentioned that teams 
against teams with current rankings are important. So like if it, like Michigan State beat Miami, that is not as important as when they beat Mich- Michigan. Like that is Minis- Michigan State like be- their best win. Of win. Right, because it, it, it of Miami is, doesn't is mean anything important. to Michigan State right now because Miami has done it was so a big poorly deal when we when we still thought, you know, and when we and still six. thought that <laughs> Miami was good or um or uh like What's another team that like? I mean, I don't know. Like, if it, like, oh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati, perfect example. Cincinnati beat um, Indiana and Notre Dame at the beginning of the of the season, and and again they had they did everything they had to do with their intent of scheduling and, and, and intending to beat these teams that are that they're better than. Like, obviously they're better than Notre Dame. Uh, Cincinnati is, but but the issue is is that that Indiana win doesn't mean anything to them. So now what do you do? Like if you're Cincinnati, like you beat Notre Dame, you beat Indiana, but Indiana hasn't beat a power five team this year. So Indiana doesn't matter to Cincinnati, if that makes any sense. Like, I think that that yeah. is a, is factored into it is their current ranking, not their, <sighs> uh, not their previous one. So I just thought that that was good to gain some perspective for the, just the, the college yeah. football in general. And again, these are going to change. So it's not worth getting upset about because again, yeah, like it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's the first rankings. Like, oh, people are like, why are, why is Oklahoma at eight? No. Or why are they so high? It's like, guys, they, they almost they, lost to Kansas. If, if Oklahoma yeah, and, ends up going undefeated, they, they, and still, deserving, they will still get in. If they have their two best opponents to face still, right. Like Baylor and Oklahoma they, state are those still quality, on the schedule. When they get those quality wins, they will then boost up in the rankings. Right. But the reason they haven't yet is because they haven't had any quality wins. It's just a matter of time. And, like, th- like the whole reason they, they release this now instead of waiting to, like, I don't know, like two weeks before the season ends. Right. It's just for this. Right. To get people talking. And we're, and we're, totally <laughs> and we're talking it. about it. Well, and, like. But it's fun. Oklahoma it's just, it's also, fun. But, like, the there, I do, like, we both know that, like, this is not final. No. And that this is just for some some talking points and conjecture. But like guys, don't freak out. Like I guess the biggest thing it tells us like if you're up, if you really want Cincinnati to be in, this probably tells you, "Hey, they're not going to let them in." And if you want to be upset about that, then that's fine. But everything else is like, guys, we're going to be fine. I mean, Oklahoma again does not have a win against a current ranked team. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think that that doesn't hold up against, like, um, like say, Michigan or, like, you know, teams with one losses who have bet who have better records against better quality, you know, opponents. I don't know. But um, that's that on that. And, again, we'll see it play out over the course of the next few weeks and probably complain about it some more. So, whatever. Right? Yep. So – you want to you want to get into the picks and talk about Of course uh, I do. I always want to get into the else. picks. By the way, I just want a quick aside here <laughs> cuz like trade deadline was very quiet other than like the Von Miller trade to the Rams for the yeah. NFL. The NFL isn't the NFL day trade after deadline the bad. trade deadline like m- crazy shit has been happening. Yeah. Like the Henry Ruggs thing that happened. Did you hear about that yeah, story? The, the DUI was that what that was? Where he drove like the DUI that, that caused death. I think I don't remember what the wording. Basically, he he was charged with the DUI that caused a wrongful death. Yeah, um, which is 160. He was going miles like 156 an hour. miles. An <laughs> Only hour, that. Yeah. It, and like, <laughs> this is one of those things. Like he was on my fantasy team, and as soon as I saw that, I was like, time to drop him because he's going to jail forever. Like. Yeah. He's gonna like it's like two to twenty years. That's right. He's gonna be in jail for I think a lot of that. Like yeah. you killed someone and a dog. I mean, you go one hundred and fifty six and you're not racing. I think there's an issue. And he was drunk. He was twi- It was it was a bad situation. Yeah. And then Aaron Rodgers with the vaccination thing and oh, like yeah, those I fantasy get into that's it. gonna fuck that up. Whoever's got Aaron oh, Rodgers like, on their fantasy just, team, well, I'd be pissed. And like he's this is gonna cost them. Like they probably lose the game now Sunday. Because Jordan Love has to go against play his first real game, and then he could miss next week because he's unvaccinated. He can't come back till Saturday next week at the earliest. And if he doesn't God, like rough. test negative, and again because he's unvaccinated, he could have it for like, longer. You can't he's be not a part get of over his symptoms game plan. Quickly. You can't do anything. He's best. Like he's like best case is Saturday, but he could miss two games, mm, and right. they're in a situation right now where like trying to get the home field advantage, especially when you play at Lambeau, and there's so many good teams in the NFC between the Cardinals, the Rams, and the Bucks. Yeah, like 
he might have just shot him, his own team in the foot. So and all that, anyway, all oh, that o- just Odell to not Beckham show Jr. up in the off season. Odell Beckham Jr. is just uh, might just be cut from the Browns because yeah, you know he's a diva. So yeah. fun times. Oh my God, what's crazy to me about the Aaron Rodgers stuff really is that he just left the whole season. I mean, the whole off season just to like not you know just to, just to get COVID. Oh my God! It's like like so you saw that drama that sucks for him. You know what I mean? That sucks for the team really because you know he he wasn't there the whole off season or whatever. Didn't show up to the tra- the practices, whatever. He, I don't know. Um. Yep. Anyway, Griff, let's get into the uh, who you got real quick, okay? Um, yep. So the first game I got right here is 13 Auburn and 12 Texas A&M. I actually can't remember. I got to look it up. I'll probably adjust it on screen, see if what their actual ranking is now. But um, we got 13 Auburn, 12 Texas A&M. Texas A&M is favored by four and a half. Um, and, but here's the thing earlier this year, Texas A&M upset Alabama. Okay. And I called it, I was right. And I said, Alabama will lose one road game this year and Alabama lost because they played a Kyle field. I think that if that game is at home, uh, Alabama doesn't lose. Um, but this game is at Kyle field and I think that Auburn will lose. Give me the four and a half, uh, for Texas A&M right here. And again, like, I think they'll cover the, I think that they'll cover the spread more like whatever. Right. Um, next game I got right here is LSU and number two, Alabama. Here's the thing, Alabama, 28 and a half point favorite. I think that you gotta be an idiot to bet on this game. Here's the secret though. I'm an idiot. I'm going to take Alabama at plus at minus 28 and a half to beat LSU and I'm sure they cover because LSU is a garbage fire and uh, and they and you know Alabama can't lose another game and I don't think they show any mercy my last game here is number five Michigan State number number three Michigan State sorry uh at uh Purdue and Michigan State has covered the spread in every game except Nebraska I think that they cover it here as well so I'll take MSU Totally fair. Totally fair. Totally fair. Absolutely fair. All right, Griff, um, go. I got some, I don't know, pretty, I don't know how to feel about my picks. Like, this is a tough week, I feel like, in college. I don't like a lot of these, so, like, I don't think anyone listens to us for actual betting advice, but. um. Oh, my God, they should. Don't. Take MSU in every game. Just every game they play, they'll always come to spread. Brad, They're like a Brad's, go-to. Brad's, 20, you know, I, I, we're doing this like it's a point system. Yeah, we are. I really should do it points like, you know, out of how many attempts because I do think that matters. But <laughs> like too. units, like how many units have we won versus lost? Yeah. I should go back. I will tabulate that next week okay. to see where we are. Perfect. Uh, because I do think that matters yeah. in terms of like, you know, when, when people talk about betting, they talk about like units because your unit is like, do you bet a dollar, ten dollars, fifty dollars, you know. Bet the same amount every bet. That is like good betting practice. You always bet a consistent number. Yeah, I always um, bet three bucks. Especially in like these where we're doing spreads. So um anyway, I got Ohio State uh getting four or giving fourteen and a half at Nebraska. I mean, give me give me Ohio State. It's fourteen and a half. They're gonna blow the doors off them. They're ranked number five. I think that's gonna Ryan Day is gonna use that as motivation. Um I think the team comes out and just stomps them. So uh, that's who I got for that. And then I got Liberty at Old Miss. Old Miss, 10.5 point favorites. I'm taking Old Miss uh, simply for the fact that I hate Malik Willis because I don't want – I everyone in Detroit keeps talking about, like, oh, what quarterback are we going to draft? We should look at Malik Willis. And if we draft Malik Willis, I will burn – this sweatshirt that I'm wearing. <laughs> I don't want him. So I hope that every time he plays, nothing against the guy. I just don't want him to succeed so that we don't draft him. Um, so give me Old Miss 10 and a half. I hope they stomp Liberty. And they probably will because it's Liberty. Liberty. Detroit. We're talking about taking a quarterback from Liberty. <laughs> God, that, that is got uh, And then low. we got Oregon. Then we got Oregon, six and a half point favorites uh, at Washington. Big Pac-12 battle. Um, UW's awful. Give me Oregon. They're fourth ranked team in the college football playoff. I think that's a motivator. And you know, I just want to see more of that 
Sexy Kayvon Thibodeau, future Detroit Lion <laughs> action, baby. That's what I want to see. You know see. What's, so what's great about Give me Oregon you know to cover the six about and a half. Oregon, uh, real quick, I want to say this. Uh, I love what Oregon and Michigan State are doing with their uniforms. Like, I love it. Like, I cannot wait until uh, NCAA 4 or whatever the fuck it is, uh, 23 or 24, whatever comes out, because, like, God, that's got to be so sick. I really hope that more teams join in that, like, uniform fun sort of thing. And uh, yeah. like I, th- I, th- I hope that they have all the all the all the stuff. Like I really hope that uh, that that they have like every Michigan State uniform, every Oregon uniform, like you name it. I really hope that they do. And the past ones, like everything. I I don't know. Like that's just a little sorry, a little aside, but that's me. I want. I can't wait for that game. Gonna buy an Xbox soon. It's gonna be a big deal. Hell yeah. Anyway. Uh, first, um, actually, I made the NFL picks this week, and I want to go through you these did. real quick. It's great. I so right. I picked Green Bay at Kansas City before Aaron Rodgers uh, was going to. Um, this was going to be was this was going to be the first time the State Farm Championship <laughs> is going to go down, um, and now we're not getting it because yeah. Aaron Rodgers is yeah. fucking dipshit. Um, so I uh, was going to pick Kansas City before the game, and I'm going to pick Kansas City now. I have no idea how if if. Uh, Green Bay wins this game. You were gonna pick them before. I was this, gonna huh? pick Kansas it, this City. This game before. was a pick 'em. Yeah, this I, game like the odds. This was a pick 'em, and now I think like Kansas City is seven point favorites. Or I, something. Yeah, and and that's the thing. But like, like Kansas City does scare me. Like they have looked rough lately. Yeah, I mean they have. I just I don't know. Like you can't go. What against if it's Patrick Jordan Mahomes. Love season? <laughs> um, Chicago at Pittsburgh. Okay, I, By the way, I'm taking Kansas City too because well, you obviously God, you're right. I probably yeah. I would take Green Bay if, if it was Rodgers, but oh I gotta take KC here. Also, I have uh, Clyde edwards alaire back in fantasy this week, and I need a big week from him. Perfect, because so, Swift is on a bye. Um, Chicago at Pittsburgh. Uh, this might be a little bit of a fan sort of thing, and I'm not a big Chicago fan right now, but I, I gotta take him. Uh, Bears are kind of, at this point. It feels like they're like hot or cold, and I mean I know they lost like last week, right? But but Justin Fields are good. Um, I, I, but I can't again. He I did. I have. Go ahead. I just can't. I I don't know. Like I, I something up for this. So I hate uh, Pittsburgh. Real quick, I just want to put that out there, and so I got to take uh, Chicago. And and I think like Justin Fields didn't like. I think he had a good moment in the game. I don't know about the ending. I think he ended up fucking up or something. But uh, but I don't know. Like he looked okay, uh, despite the heartbreaker uh, last week. But uh, I don't know. I can't. I gotta go against the Steelers here. I mean that's fair. But this is. I need to look something up because this actually very much affects my my pick. Although I don't. Oh yeah. So Matt Nagy didn't coach in week eight. Good for I him. don't know if he's going to coach. In week nine, and I think that's the thing. Matt Nagy can't coach uh, Justin Fields. He does not build a game plan around Justin Fields, his starting quarterback. If if Nagy, so I'm doing this with a condition. If Nagy, here's the thing. I think I do Pittsburgh either way. I if Nagy is coaching, I would actually bet money on Pittsburgh. Like I would, I would personally bet on this. Oh my god, I don't bet really at all. But I would bet. Pittsburgh to win here if Nagy is coaching. If he's not, I wouldn't touch it because who knows how Fields will do with right. uh, a play caller that isn't totally incompetent. <sighs> but I do think if you know, even if Nagy, if Nagy's out and like we're picking this for the sake of the picks, I still pick Pittsburgh because of the defense. The offense is awful, but I think the Pittsburgh defense is better than the Chicago defense. And I think that edge will be enough. Like I think TJ Watt will disrupt Fields enough to hamper the defense or hamper the Chicago offense. And I think the offense will be able to do enough to to get a win here for Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, so this last one's an interesting one because uh, <sighs> this seems too easy. Um, L.A. at Philly. I had to put some Chargers. Some Chargers at yeah, uh, sorry. important distinction. Chargers at Philadelphia. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I I put this one on here because uh, specifically because I wanted a reason to root for Justin Fields again, who again is my quarterback in fantasy, despite having less. You mean ju- you mean Justin Herbert? Justin. Yeah, I'm sorry. What the fuck am I on? No, you said Fields, it's but a, I, 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 I. You know what I, I meant. I'm yes. sorry. It's been a long day. 
Um, You're good. But you are good. Tua put up more points than him in fantasy. So if he doesn't get it together, I will kill him. Uh, but Philadelphia. <laughs> They've looked um, rough. That's been scary for me. So Philadelphia is like a three-win team, and one of those wins comes with an asterisk because it was against Detroit. So um, I don't know. I'm going to take L.A. The Chargers win here by a bunch of points, and that is what I'm going to say. Um, I just need Justin Herbert to do a thing. So that yeah, is – Yeah, see, I, I have – I have we Justin both Herbert. Need Justin Herbert to do so a thing. we both have Justin Herbert. My fiance, my my wife has yeah. Justin Herbert. She has Austin Eckler, the running back. I have Mike Williams, one of their wide receivers, and she has Jared Cook, their tight end. Mm. I need the I need the Chargers to score sixty points every week. Yeah, because that's like the best case scenario Whoa. for all of us, right? So yeah, I would love if Justin Herbert bounces back i think the philadelphia defense is the perfect team to do it against because despite what they did to the detroit lions they're not good (laughs) the chargers have a prolific offense herbert is good i think this is a good get right game for him they obviously haven't looked great in the last couple weeks i think we finally see it and i'm hoping to god mike williams bounces back and has a much better week this week so hopefully um Speaking of fantasy, all right, let's talk about it. Oh my god, I hate it. Brad, you go first. You had a great, you had a good. Week. I don't want to talk about it. So uh, I actually got <laughs> you lucky. won at least. I actually got lucky. So um, I went against the highest point scorer in the league. Right, come out, yep. come out with a win. I don't know how I did it, but I uh, did it somehow. Um, he, it was actually kind of crazy. Actually, he had ninety three points, which is very low for him. Uh, I had one hundred and thirty three. Like everyone underperformed uh, for everyone, so that's how I feel about that. The next week's gonna be interesting because I gotta play Zach Pascal again, and I just don't want to play him. Like I have no interest in that, um, because he sucks. But he's projected to get nine, which is like average. Um, but I have like four guys on a buy again, uh, mostly because I have three Tampa Bay players. I was going to say you got Gronk, <laughs> you have Mike, got Mike Evans. Evans and Giovanni Bernard, but, um, well, Bernard's not a big loss. Yeah. And then Brad, AJ okay, Green you gotta go. On, <laughs> you gotta go on your fucking waiver wire. I'm trying my best. Oh my God. But I'm first place. Well, so the I'm issue is last. you're so high that you don't. You don't get your lowest in waiver. Order, I am the only. I am the only, um, the only team right now that's six and two. Actually, no, one more is six and two. He had a comeback. I'm sorry, I misspoke. So there's two six and two teams on my league. Uh, but I have an 88 percent chance of making the playoffs. So and which is the highest in our league. So, um, yeah, I mean. So the so my uh, my fourteen man and ten man league mm-hmm. um both won. Things are looking really good in both those leagues, but <sighs> this 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 week was just hell, man. Yeah, this I'm was so just sorry. this I was felt so awful. bad for you. It it was so I scored seventy points. Yeah. Naturally. Uh in a P- full PPR league. Was not good. Mm-hmm. Um I dropped down to from second in my division to fourth, although it's a three-way tie, so it's it's all really close. And the reason I'm that low is because I, f- I fell so far. I was second in total points scored. I have dropped to, I believe, fourth. Mm. Yeah, fourth in points scored. I just went from forty bucks to tw- to, uh, or like uh, forty bucks to twenty dollars, or in in, uh, winnings mm. at the end of the season. So. Not great, mm-hmm. not great, not great, not great. But the good news. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh wait, let me see. Points four. Yeah, I'm in fourth place. Now the good news is, I'm still five and three. Yeah. Um, I am still have a sixty four percent chance to make the playoffs. And here's the thing: like the high, person with the highest odds right now is seventy eight. So it's very close, right? Like there are six teams. It's basically down to six teams now in a 12-man league. Mm-hmm. That's where we're at. It's six teams. Four of them are going to get in. So it's going to come down to which, you know, I have a two-thirds shot, basically. I think everyone at this point has a two-thirds chance. I just need to get lucky uh, and keep having my team perform. But, I mean, I, Justin Herbert, bad week. Alvin Kamara, had a fine week. You know, a little under his projection, but 
he, he did fine. Swift, 8.8 points, like half what he was projected. DJ Moore, 9.9 points. Uh, Mike Williams, 3.9. My tight end, Dude, like that is so four rough. points. Cortland Sutton, six points. Defense got me like, like, like one or two. And then my kicker had like nine. <laughs> so I literally had one one or two, well technically two because herbert did but he's a quarterback so it's not a big deal i had one skill player get to double digits my god so that sucks but like it's weird like dj moore had a great start mike williams had a great start Cortland sutton is the definition of boomer bust my whole team kind of is and literally all of them busted this week so except for kamara he did not bust so I, you know, I just gotta ride ride the wave. You know, it's basically the same lineup this week. Although here's the thing, I get George Kittle back this week. He's been on IR. That's huge because he is a consistent tight end. He'll get me probably double digits. Uh, assuming he plays, I do still have a backup tight end in case he doesn't. Um, and then I also have Clyde edwards alaire filling in for Swift because Swift is on the bye week. It'll either be him or Williams depending on if edwards alaire plays. I just gotta hope. He does enough, but I'm confident enough in, uh, you know, I'm confident enough in Kamara. He'll be great. Herbert and Williams, I'm hoping they're going to bounce back very well uh, this week against uh, the the Eagles. You know, Cortland Sutton is literally a coin flip every week, but you just got to kind of ri- got to ride it with them, you know. And I don't really have a great bench receiver anymore. You know, I had Rugs, but I just dropped him, obviously. Um, and then I have Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones, but I don't think either of them are better than any of the receivers I listed. So just going to ride the wave. I'm hoping the guy I'm going up against this week, his team is okay. Um, you know, he's got on the – like he has DK Metcalf, who is out this week, which is very helpful for me. Sorry, Brad. I need to win badly this week. Can't fall to five and four. I'd be very sad. Um, and you know he's got a lot of guys on his bench that are hurt, which is lucky for me. Uh, you just gotta, I just gotta ride it. You know, he, he like I said, uh, his team is nothing crazy. I think he'll probably he has Lamar Jackson. He'll probably play him, but like his running backs are Zach Moss and Kenneth Gainwell. And his receivers, like Michael Pittman Jr. has been very good. But then in Metcalf is out. Manuel Sanders got zero points last week. Travis Kelsey has not been, you know, the scary Travis Kelsey he's been this season. Although I'm sure that'll fucking change this week because he's going against me. I don't know. It's going to be very interesting to say the least. We just got to, you know, we just got to ride it and hope uh, things go well. So I want to I want to update you real quick on two pl- two moves I just made. Okay. Um, okay. You know who I got on the waiver wire? Real quick, Donovan Peoples Jones. Okay. DVP. Okay. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. N- see. Here's the it's thing. You know a who's bad out? Play. Um, because mostly I think I did that to replace. Um, uh, I can't remember who it was. Um, but but the one I did do was Sony Sonny Mitchell. Sony Michelle? Yeah. Sony you pick Michelle. him up or drop him? I picked him up. All right. Because, I mean, I don't know. Like, my main concern specifically was that um, I have Sammy Watkins on my team and Latavius Murray, and both players are, like, dealing with injuries. And, mm-hmm. like, Sammy Watkins had a hamstring injury before last week's bye week, and then uh, Murray was out in week seven with an ankle injury, and so my, my issue is that they, they are benched right now because um, they are probably, like, going to see a Gronk situation in the sense that, like, like Gronk was only out to block. Like, that's it. He was only playing to block, and he didn't play the entire fourth quarter. He ended up getting zero points, yeah. and I won, but, you know, it was still a big deal. So to avoid that, I picked up uh, just two players that are probably just going to get points. Cause I just to get, I mean, more than zero, more than zero. That's what I was going for. Which is fair. Which is fair. By the way, I went and I just looked at my league's waiver wire. It's so weird. Derrick Henry is there because he's out for base. (laughs) Cause like our season ends in week. Like I think we, cause we go to week 18 cause there's 17 games and the bye week. So it's 18. I think we go 
to we go 14 school. our season's over at 14 and then it starts playoffs and then it's playoffs i think we are the same if okay. i'm not mistaken i'm gonna check the schedule oh, you know who i play this week oh no it's yeah we go to 14 and then it's 15 16 for that i don't think henry's back by that mm-hmm. i i mm, i like i could just pick him up and stash him like i'm not using the slot for anything i might mm-hmm. just stash him like because what if he comes back sooner than expected right it's not a, the worst idea although i'm last in waiver order so i probably won't get him right but whatever the, you know it sucks to be winning you know <laughs> uh, I just hope that I just hope the winning continues, man. That's all I can hope for. You know, Jonathan Taylor plays the Jets this week, so I'm really like just begging him to do something big. Yeah, I think I think most of my matchups are favorable. The only thing I don't like is Carolina. I have DJ Moore. He's going against New England, who their defense mm. is pretty stout. Yeah. And then George Kittle is going against the Cardinals. But they they are pretty good against uh, the tight ends. But right. I don't know what tight ends they like. It's George Kittle, right? You play George Kittle. It's just one. He's I took him in the second round or third round. You take George. You play George Kittle, and then Cortland Sutton's going against like Dallas, who's like it. Like Dallas is weird because their defense is so like they either give up like a ton of points or like they're very good. Like they'll get like three turnovers, but then they also give up like four hundred yards and like. 27 points it's it's kind of weird you know the the good so. part for me real quick is uh that uh i have the chiefs defense from last week and oh my god I, if they don't score 15 Ooh. i'll be so see, that's, mad see it's one of those things where like that's a risk reward right like yeah if love if he like balls out because look what happened with like mike white like no one has tape on him no like, that's gonna but if he has struggles, you know, you're going to get a bunch of interceptions well, and, and I he might it, fumble because of the, the sacks. I picked the Chiefs uh, defense last week because they were playing the Giants. And and and, uh, and what the fuck is the dude's name? Uh, D- Daniel Jones? Dude's awful. Like, I hate – I can't stand him. So Danny Dimes. Like, oh my That's God, the other Giants thing is the Chiefs fans. defense is rough. I would probably – get a different defense if i were yeah. you but like i mean the only it, reason it's I'm all keeping them is because defense matters i think matchup oh. like i had the Bengals defense last week yeah. and they got me only they got me like two points only because of they got some early turnovers the only way i'll trade i'll switch out kansas city right now really is if uh the whoever's playing pittsburgh is available to be honest chicago chicago yeah they're not they're not well no they are maybe i'll take them they don't take Pittsburgh. That's, I don't know if Chicago's right. defense would Chicago. be available though. So they are. They are right now. Anyway. I could take them right now. Oh, I. That's not awful. I wouldn't hate it. Oh, I might. Let's do it. I let's probably do like it. the let's Chicago's defense. I have. I have picked a defense to play Pittsburgh in like four out of whatever weeks. So hey, I'm taking. If it ain't broke, got me wins don't in every single time. So all my, right, Brad. It, anyway. <laughs> um. I think that's that's all we got. I hope uh, everyone enjoyed um, me and Brad's yelling about oh God, yeah. Michigan football. Um, Join us next very week. Very exciting for MSU. We actually have a quick yeah. announcement real quick. Um, we have an interview coming up. Uh, we have a guest episode, which is exciting. Uh, tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Because this episode uploads on Thursday. We're going to do a Thursday interview for Friday. So, um yeah, two days in a row we got uh, we got if an episode. If you want to hear out. about the Red Wings, we <laughs> yeah, are if you want to do uh, hockey, yeah, and a listen, couple more hey, Detroit stuff. if you the main show, we get it. We're we're appealing to the mass audience, but if but I think some hockey talk appeases you, right? Oh, yeah, we're here to talk about it exactly. And I think that this we're will be good because it. it'll give us a space to talk about non-traditional stuff. Like we really want to fit like football. And like big stuff into that, but then when you get to it, like by the way, congrats to the Braves. <laughs> right, I know they somehow won the World Series. Like we, I, I think I'm gonna do a baseball episode. We'll up. talk about them next week, and, uh, yeah, a probably. little more, I'm sure. I, I, I want to get into the Mets at some point. We got to do that um, at some point. But we've just been talking about Michigan State for so long. Like I, I've, yeah. I've gone down to writing one Mets article a week. But uh, anyway, Griff. Uh, if that's all, let's, uh, let's, let's sign off. We got, uh, we got, we got a Twitter, a Twitter at take this pod, um, tweet us your thoughts and hot takes, and we will put them on air. I swear to God, if, if, if my mom doesn't do it, then God wants to yell at us 
<laughs> we will talk about your tweets if you tweet at us. Um, so if you want some clout, we'll 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 call out. We the, will the, give the, you the, the clout. And everything. We'll give you the clout. Um, Griff, this has been great. Uh, we'll all see you guys again uh, next time. Bye. See you.